Welcome back to So You Really Want to Learn Latin, and today we are going to be looking at the fourth conjugation, the verb audio, which means I hear or I listen to. Now, verbs that go like audio are pretty recognisable because they tend, most verbs that go like audio tend to go eo uh, as opposed to eo. Now you'll remember we looked at moneo and found that verbs that go like moneo tend to go eo. And then they have principal parts which go moneo, monere. And then normally monui, monitum, or something similar to that. Well, verbs that go like audio are recognisable because they've got that I before the O. That's not 100% secure as a way of identifying them, but it, it's good enough for now. Um, and then they have principal parts which go eo, ire, iwi, item. That's the main recognisable pattern. So for example, audio goes audio, audire, audiwi, auditum. Okay, now the endings you're not going to have any difficulty with at all. The present tense, it's the same old friends, OST, musti, sunt, um, but as you'd expect, there's a little bit of funniness that goes on because you've got this I at the end of the stem. Okay, so it's audi, o, audis, audit, audimus, auditis, audiunt. So that final one, the third person plural, has got uh, UNT um, on the end of the stem, AUD. Apart from that, it's just OST, mustisunt. Okay? The future tense of AUDIO is behaving very much like REGO did. Now, you remember we looked at REGO a week or so ago, and in the future tense, that was going REGAM, REGES, REGET, REGAMUS, REGATIS, REGENT. Well, audio in the future tense is going audi am, audi ace, audi et, audi amus, audi etis, audi ent. Okay, so it's got exactly the same endings in the future tense as rego does, but they are added on to the stem, which has got the letter I. Okay. The imperfect tense. You're not going to have any trouble with this. We're so familiar with bam, bas, bat, bam, bas, bat, bas, bant as the main endings. Um, but just as rego went a bam, a bas, a but, a bamus, a batis, a bunt, so audio does that. So it's going audi a bam, audi a bas, audi a but, audi a bamus, audi a batis, audi a bunt. Okay? Really, really easy to spot. Uh, and when you're going from English into Latin, just remember the stem of audio is the letter I. And then you're not going audi bam, audi bas, audi bat. You're going audi a bum, audi a bas, audi a but. Okay? And then finally, the perfect tense. Well, as we now know, the perfect tense endings are always e isti it imus istis erunt. So you just need to know what the perfect stem is. And the vast majority of verbs that go like audio have a perfect stem that goes I, V, and then the letter I. So, audiwi is the third principal part of audio, and therefore the perfect tense is going audiwi, audiwisti, audiwit, audiwimus, audiwistis, Audi wearant. Okay? Nothing tricky at all with audio. Verbs that go like audio, um, dormio, which means I sleep, uh, wenio, which means I come, and there are a couple of compounds of wenio, which are quite interesting. There's re wenio, which means I come back, um, there's in wenio, which means I find. Um, we have an expression in English, I come upon, or I, I came upon 
a shepherd walking down a path. I came upon him. Um, well, in Wenyo is come in, so I guess that's where that expression comes from. So in Wenyo means I find, and then um, there's the verb aperio, which means I open. Aperio, aperieri. This one's a bit peculiar. Aperui, apertum. Uh, we get the word aperture, an opening. Um, so, so there, there are four or five uh, fourth conjugation verbs going like audio. Nothing very hard. Okay, now we've now learnt the four main conjugations. So we know verbs that go like amo have principal parts that go o r e r we artem. We know that verbs that go like moneo go eo eri, and then many of them go ui itum. Not all, but many. Rego, we've recently come across, and we know that the pattern for rego is rego regere, and then whatever the third and fourth principal parts are. There's no pattern you can learn, you just have to learn them. Um, so, you know, we had kogo, kogre, koegi, koarktum, you know, you're never going to guess that one. Um, and now today we've got audio, audio, audire, audivi, auditum. Okay, so those are the four main conjugations in Latin. And if you think about it, it's, it sounds like a lot, but actually you've learnt that the present tense endings for all of those verbs are effectively O, S, T, mus, tis, unt, just occasionally with a vowel kind of stuck in there to help it along. So with amo, those endings have been put on the present stem, a ma, so you get a ma, samat, a ma, samat, samant. For moneo, they've been stuck on mone, so we get moneo, mones, monet, monemus, monetis, monent. For rego, the present stem of rego is reg, so we need a vowel to kind of get those endings to work. Uh, and the vowel typically is an I, though sometimes it's a U. So we had rego, regis, regit, regimus, regitis, regunt, with a U. And then today we've just come across audio. Because its stem has got a, a vowel, audi, we can just add our ost, mustis, and endings. Um, audio, audis, audit, audimus, auditis. And then the third person plural, the only one to watch out for, is it kind of grabs the u, which rego uses, to give us audiunt, rather than what you might have expected, which would have been audint. Okay? Future tense, okay? A lot of people don't like learning the future tense. I don't know why. It's not hard. For amo and monio, bovis bit, bimus bit is bunt. And for rego and audio, am ace et, amus etis ent. Okay? Really, really easy. Just, you know, don't let people say you don't need the future. You do, and so let's do it. Um, imperfect, really simple. Bam bars pat, bombers parties bunt. For amo and moneo, those bam bars pat endings just go onto the end of the present stem. So you get amar bum, amar bas, amar but, amar bamas, amar bartis, amar bunt. Or mone bum, mone bas, mone but, mone bamas, mone bartis, mone bunt. And for rego and audio, and these two sort of couple up quite often together, rego and audio behave in very, very similar ways. Instead of just bam bas bat, it's a bum, a bas, a but. So we had reggae bum, reggae bas, reggae but, reggae bamas, reggae batis, reggae bunt. And now we've got audi a bum, audi a bas, audi a but, audi a bamas, audi a batis, audi a bunt. Okay? 
And just before we leave the subject of verbs, um, the perfect tense of a Latin verb is always taken from the third principle part, chop off the eye of whatever that third principle part was, and then add the endings, e isti it, imus istis errant. And remember, ammo you can kind of guess they will be are we type forms. Moneo, you can't really guess. You'd hope they would be ooey kind of things, but they're not by any means always that. Um, Rego, you just have to learn them, so learn the principal parts. And audio, very, very often they are going ewe in the perfect tense. So dormio, dormio, dormire, dormiwi, dormitum. So, you know, really nice and recognisable, like audiwi. However, don't be surprised, a lot of verbs don't do it. So, weneo, which means I come, weneo, weniere, weni, wentum. Okay, and good time to notice, Julius Caesar famously said, uh, weni, weedy, wiki, that meaning, I came, I saw, I conquered. So, weni, third principal part of weneo, Weedy, third principal part of Wideo, and Wiki, third principal part of Winko. Winko, Winkery, Wiki, Wictum, I conquer. Okay, so there's a little bit of Julius Caesar for us uh, as we finish off our verbs. Um, and just because there's, you know, that's a nice short lesson, um, I thought we'd finish with um, a little Latin passage that we can do now. It comes out of the book. Uh, it follows on from our rather grim introduction to Roman history. Last time we were looking at the Sabine women. and We discovered how Romulus populated his new city by uh, effectively kidnapping a load of women from the neighbouring Sabine tribe. And then Tarpeia, the daughter of one of those women, slightly disgraced herself by trying to betray the new city to the besieging Sabine army. You remember she, she took a fancy to the bracelets that the Sabine soldiers were wearing on their arms. And uh, she said, you know, can you give me those bracelets? And when the soldiers came into the city, they did indeed give her the bracelets. Uh, but they also gave her the other things that they had on their left arms, which were these enormous heavy shields, and they threw the heavy shields at her and squished her. Uh, so we looked at that in English last time. We're now going to just have a little look at it in Latin. Uh, so, as I say, there's a translation in the book. We'll just have a quick go and check we can do it following all our golden rules and spotting whether there are any of our new fourth conjugation verbs in this passage. OK, so here we go. I'll read that because I can't remember it off the top of my head, and then we'll just go through it. OK. Romani contra Sabinus bellum gerebant. Tarpea Sabino Swedit said Sabini puellam non audiverum. Sabini scuta mangna et armillas pulcras habebant. Tarpea armillas amabat et clamavit. Armillas vestras amo et sabinos in opidum nostrum ducam. Sabini tamen puellam malam non amabant. In opidum ambulant et puellam miserem scutis superant. OK, now, I'm sure you won't have too much difficulty with this. Uh, best way to cope with a slab of Latin is to get out a pencil and write your own translation. But just to guide you through it, uh, we'll have a little look at the way we should be doing this. OK, so our first sentence, Romani contra sabinos bellum gerebant, Look at the verb first, 
third person plural, subject therefore is they or a noun in the nominative plural. We have Romani at the beginning, so there's our nominative plural. Okay, so Romani gerebant, the Romans, uh, gerol means I wage in the sense of I wage war. Okay, or to carry on in the sense of to carry on a war. So, Romani contra Sabinos bellum gerebant, the Romans were waging. What were they waging? We want an object in the accusative case, and we've got bellum. Bellum, nice neuter, second declension noun meaning war. So, the Romans were waging a war, and they were waging it contra Sabinos. Contra plus accusative means against, and Sabinos is obviously the Sabines. Okay, so there's our first sentence. The Romans were waging a war against the Sabines. On we go. Tarpea Sabinos weedit, said Sabini puellam non audiverunt. Okay, now here's a sentence with two clauses. So we Go to the first verb first, which is weed it. Now, weed it is coming from widdeo, widdeo, widari, weedy, weesome. Means I see. It's a second conjugation verb. Uh, so, third person singular, our subject is third person singular, or a noun in the nominative singular. And at the front of the sentence we have tarpeia. Okay, this is the wicked Tarpeia girl. So, Tarpeia weedit Sabinos. Tarpeia saw the Sabines. Into the next clause. Said, as said is a conjunction, it means but. But, Sabini puellam non audiverunt. Go to that second verb. And we've got audiverunt, third person plural, or a or a noun in the nominative plural. So the subject of that verb is third person plural, so that's they, or a noun in the nominative plural. Okay, now we do have a noun in the nominative plural, it's Sabini, so, but the Sabines, non audiverunt, did not hear Puellam, that's our object, the girl. Okay, on we go. Sabini scuta mangna et armillas pultras habebant. Go to the verb first, habebant. Third person plural, the subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. Back to the beginning we go, and we have Sabini, the Sabines. So, the Sabines had, or were having, the Sabines had. Now, what did they have? They had scuta mangna. Now, scutum means a shield, and mangnus, we know, is our adjective friend, it means big. So, the Sabines had big shields, et armillas pulcras. Now, an armilla, uh, first French noun, uh, like means that, means a bracelet. So, they had big shields and armillas pulcras. Pulcare, you remember, means beautiful. So it's, uh, they, they had big shields and beautiful bracelets. Okay, on we go. Tarpeia armillas armabat et clamavit. Couldn't be easier, really. First verb first, armabat. He, she, it, or noun in the nominative singular. And we have tarpeia. So, tarpeia loved armillas the bracelets, et clamavit, and she shouted, now what did she shout? Armillas vestras amor, et sabinos in opidum nostrum ducam. Okay, first verb first, amor, I love. So, I love armillas vestras, armillas, the bracelets, and vestair, means your, belonging to you lot, you plural. So, I love your bracelets, et sabinos in opidum nostrum 
do come. Go to the verb, do come. Now, duco means I lead, goes like rego. So do come is the first person singular future tense. I will lead, or I shall lead, I should say. Okay. Uh, and I shall lead, where's our object? Sabinos, the Sabines, in opidum nostrum. Now, in plus the accusative means into. So I shall lead the Sabines into opidum, the town, and it's opidum nostrum, our town. Okay, Sabini Taman, Puella Malam Nun Amarbant. Go to the verb first, Amarbant, third person plural, subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. We're getting good at this now, back to the beginning we go, and we have Sabini. So, the Sabines, Tamen, means however, let's get that out of the way, Sabini Tamen, the Sabines, however, Nun Amarbant, did not love, and who did they not love? We want an object in the accusative, and we have puellam malam, the bad girl. Okay, so the Sabines, however, did not love the bad girl. In opidum ambulant et puellam miseram scutis superant. First verb first, ambulant, uh, third person plural, Subject must be they or a noun in the nominative plural. This time, when we go back to the beginning, we don't find a noun in the nominative plural. We've got in and opidum, but no nominative plural. So this subject is they. They walk. Now, where do they walk? Or, you know, in opidum, into the town. Et, conjunction, beginning a new clause, and, and we have. Put a la misaram scutis superant. Go to that verb, superant. The subject is they, or a noun in the nominative plural. Back we come to see if there's a nominative plural, and there isn't. So be very careful here, don't get lured into the trap of taking that accusative before you've taken the verb. That's a rule we've learned and we must stick to. So, and superant, they overcome. Now, who do they overcome? They, they overcome, we want an object in the accusative. Pu'alam misaram. The miser is an adjective ending in er, and it means wretched or unhappy. So, they overcome the wretched girl. Pu'alam misaram. Scutis. Now, that's... Dative or ablative plural of scutum, goes like bellum, means a shield. So they overcome the wretched girl with their shields. Okay. Now, we raced through that quite quickly. I don't think there was anything that would have caused you too much trouble. Just one thing to comment on before we leave this, and that is the use of a tense which is called the historic present. Now, the historic present tense is used in many languages, actually, where you use what is grammatically a present tense, but you use it when you're actually describing events in the past, and you do it for dramatic effect. Now, it sounds a little bit cheesy to say there's much drama going on in this little story here. Um, where you see a present tense, and it's clearly referring to the past, you can do one of two things. You can either just translate it as the present tense, you know, which wouldn't be wrong, because after all, it is a present tense. Or, to kind of up your game a little bit, you can recognise the fact that it is only in the present tense to try to make the story more vivid. And so, for example, those, that, that last couple of verbs, we had in optum ambulant et puellam misram scutis superant. Now, strictly speaking, that meant they walk 
into the town and they overcome the wretched girl with shields. Well, clearly they're not doing it now. They, so we would probably have translated that as they walked into the town and they overcame the wretched girl with shields. Okay, And if someone were to say to you, well, how come that verb in Latin was in the present tense? You would say with a knowing smile on your face, ha-ha, it was a historic present. Okay, right, that's a little gem for you to tuck away into your little armoury of grammatical heroisms, if that's a word, I don't think it is. Uh, see you here next time for more on uh, Latin. Hope you're enjoying these lessons. We're going at a thumping pace now. We are pretty much finished with chapter six. We've sorted out all the verb types, all the regular verb types. Uh, next time we'll have a little peep at something called the mixed conjugation. But until then, keep up the good work.